I think mm. teacher. Lot of lot of activities that in Kalashan National. Okay. You're welcome. The microphone. Okay. Teacher. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no. Sorry. No, the thing is it's raining. It's raining here, but it's, uh, it's not raining that heavily. And then a thunder uh, came like lightning, and then my computer shut off. Okay. I'm sorry, Noe. No, no problem, teacher. No problem. Okay, perfect. So uh, we are going to continue with the class. So Noe was talking about Palacio Nacional, right? National Palace. So as, I was, as I was saying before, um, you can say, but uh, the years normally is like 2022, 2022, it's okay, but also 1999, 1998, 1874, 1970. So that's okay, right? That's normal. Okay, teacher. Okay, Noe. Now, okay. I, I want you to choose another person to practice. Who? Sorry? Mary Siwensa. Mary Siwensa. Are you there, yeah. Mary? Yes. yes. Okay, okay, Mary. Did you do the homework? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay, perfect. Okay. My grandmother is um, Suchitalan Lake. It's, it's called it Cerro Grande, Cerro Grande Reservator. Uh, their name, see, his name were given for by Alejandro Cotto. Is is in LA is artificial. Artificial created in, in the years 1900, with co the construction for the Cerro Grande hydroelectric plant. Mm -hmm. Only that is. Okay, very good, very good. So remember, years 1976 is okay, right? Uh -huh. like, like instead of saying 1976, yes. 1976. And you were talking about Lago Suchitlan or uh, Cerrón Grande? No, Lago Suchitlan. Lago Suchitlan. Okay, perfect. So that is an artificial lake, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Maria Siguenza. Now choose another person to practice the, the presentation. Eric Cardoza. Okay, Eric Cardoza, did you do the homework? Good evening, teacher. Yes, I did the homework. Okay, perfect. Uh, what but is, yeah. Can I talk about other landmark? I mean, like international landmark? Yes, you can talk about international landmark or national landmark. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, okay. So I'm going to talk about uh, the, the Yaj Mahal. Uh, it's a monument of love, and is uh, is located in in India. Agra was built in in eighteen fifty five. Uh, is and as and the Taj Mahal is a symbol for uh, India, Asia, Stonehenge, Wilshire. Wilshire country in the UK, the UK, the world's most famous prehistory monument. That's it. Okay, perfect, very good. So uh, you were talking about the Taj Mahal and it's located in Agra, India, right? India, right. Yes. Okay, and it was built in 1855. 55, yes. Okay, perfect, you used the uh, 
the passive voice. Very good, perfect, Eric. Eric, now okay. choose another person, please. Um, let me see. Uh, and Juan Linares, ya pasó. Juan Linares, are you there, Juan Linares? Yes, I am here. Okay, are you ready with the homework? Yes. Okay, which landmark are you going to talk about? I'm going to talk about the Salvador del Mundo. Okay, the monument to the divine savior of the world is a monument located in the Plaza del Salvador del Mundo in the city of San Salvador. It is a symbol that identifies and represents both El Salvador and Salvadorians around the world. Only that teacher. Okay, very good. So where is it located? In El Salvador. In El Salvador, in, in San Salvador, the, right? Yes. Okay, did you investigate it when it was built or I don't know who built it or what it represents? Not sure, that not. Not that much, okay, perfect. But it's okay, very I good. Have the, the same monument. You, you have the same monument. Do you like to participate, Sandra? Yes. Okay, so continue talking about Salvador del Mundo. Go, go ahead. Uh, uh, Salvador del Mundo Square. It is located in San Salvador City, and it is one of the most pro prominent attractions. And it is considered a national symbol of this country. And it opened in 1942 and pays homage to Jesus, the patron saint of El Salvador. Okay, very good. So it's located in San Salvador City. It's a prominent attraction. And you said that it was built in 1942? Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. So it was built in 1942. I didn't know that. Very good, very interesting information. Now, Sandra, choose another person who hasn't participated. Alguien que no haya participado, escoja. Ana María. Ana María. Ana María. Que María Sigüenza ya participó, pero Ana María Sass. Are you there, Ana María? So she cannot talk. She, she's, she's working. Another person. Okay, very good, Eric. Taj Mahal was built in 1632. Okay, perfect. Another person, Jaime. Sandra? Jaime. Are you there, Jaime? Hi, teacher. I'm I going to try at home. Sorry? I don't to drive at my home. It's driving, teacher. It's driving my my uh, your home. Teacher, no se lo escucha. Sorry, sorry. I have another another microphone. Who hasn't participated yet? ¿Quién no ha participado que se hizo la tarea? Rosa, I think. Me, All of Catherine. Catherine. Okay, Catherine. What um, was uh, what is your landmark? I chose a Chris the Redeemer. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, is an art deco statue of, of Jesus Christ in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Created by French sculptor Paul and built by Brazilian engineer in collaboration with French engineers. Um, if 
passionate the space uh, it was construction construct between uh, 1922 and 1931 uh, the statue is uh, 30 meters and the arm is straight uh, 28 meters and the statue represents or oh, is a symbol of the christianity around the world that's it okay perfect catherine and where is it located in brazil rio de janeiro rio de janeiro okay perfect perfect so remember uh it's a statua is in spanish right a statua it's like a monument a statua but in english how do we pronounce a statua statue right statue is kind of difficult but it's statue statue try to practice it but it was really good really good presentation it was it was built in 1922 by brazilian engineers and french engineers very good now let's see uh somebody else or that's it alguien más anybody else wants to participate that's it okay perfect so we are going to continue with the uh passive voice okay let me see here this one Okay, we are going to, let me see here. Yes, I had some problems with that, with my computer, so sorry. Now we are going to finish practicing with uh, the passive voice. We are going to practice a little bit. For example, uh, we have some examples here. Like we already know, we don't know who did the action. For example, my house was broken into on friday so we don't know who broke into my house so in this case this sentence is impassive but we don't know who did it right who did the action there is no doer of the action for example he was killed in the earthquake so there is no doer of the action because it's an earthquake right number three the fact is more important than the doer of the action my dog was run over by a car so what happened to my dog is more, more important than the doer of the action. So that is a review of the passive voice. Remember, um, this is uh, the active, right? So we change the, uh, the subject and it becomes the object, right? And the object becomes the subject, right? President Herbert Hoover opened the building in 1931. The building was opened by president in 1931. So we transform the active sentence into passive, right? We have more examples here. This is just an example. Mr. Johnson prepared the food. The food was prepared by Mr. Johnson. Santiago wrote a book. The book was written by Santiago. And in the platform, we also have the structure, right? Object plus was where, this is the verb to be, plus past participle of a verb, by phrase and time complement. So if we follow this structure, we are going to be able to write all the passive voice in simple pass. This is the homework that we had. We just did it. And now we are going to transform some sentences with the passive voice. Now we are going to transform these ones. For example, let me see here. Yes. For example, uh, are you able to read? Pueden leerlas? Las alcanzan a ver? Or they are too small to read? Not sure. It's too I small? More big. It's too small to read. Okay, so I will read them, okay? For example, Frederick Bartoldi designed the Statue of Liberty in 1884. How can we transform that into passive? ¿Cómo la podemos transformar en pasiva? En voz pasiva. 
Frederick Bartholdi designed the Statue of Liberty in 1980, and sorry, 1884. Um, the Statue of Liberty, Statue of Liberty, um, was the scene it was the scene in 1884 mm -hmm. by Frederick. by Frederick Bartoldi. Very good, very good. The Statue of Liberty was designed in 1884 by Frederick Bartoldi. You see, it is is it's, it's kind of easy when you know how to change the things. Next one, Marie Curie discovered radium in 1898. How can we transform that? Marie Curie discovered radium in 1898. The radium. Radium. It what is radium? Power. Radiation, right? Radium, so, uh, uh -huh. radiation. so, radium was in, discovered. Uh, was discovered in in, in eighteen in eighteen oh eight ninety eight ninety eight by Marie Curie. By Marie Curie, very good, very good, perfect. <laughs> Next one, Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote 100 Years of Solitude in 1971. How can we transform that? 100 Years of Solitude. Mm -hmm. 100 Years of Solitude. Was written. Was written. By Gabriel Garcia Marquez in 1971. Perfect, very good. 100 Years of Solitude was written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez in 1971. Number four, whoop. Um, teacher, yes. uh, um, I have a question. Yes. Um, we can use uh, at the beginning in 1971. Yes. Yes, but we need we need to place a comma. For example, in 1971, comma, 100 comma. years of solitude was written by Gabriel Gar Gabriel Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Okay, yes, thank you. It. Yes. Now, number four, Wu Pike produced the first digital HD TV in 1991. Wu Pike produced the first digital HD TV in 1991. How can we transform that? Uh -huh. Exactly. Very good. Perfect. Bye. Yes. By Wu Pike. Perfect. So uh, the first digital HDTV was produced in 1991 by Wu Pike. And the last one, Salma Hayek played Frida Kahlo in the movie Frida in 2002. How can we transform that? Frida Kahlo in the movie was playing mm -hmm. by Fritz Salma Hayek in 2002. Very good. Frida Kahlo in the movie Frida, right? Frida Kahlo was played by Salma Hayek in the movie Frida in 2002. Perfect. Very good. So we have here the answers. As you can see, the Statue of Liberty was designed by Frederick Bartoli in 1984. Radium was discovered by Marie Curie in 18, 1898. HDTV was 
uh, mm -hmm. sorry, 100 Years of Solitude was written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez in 1971. The first digital HDTV was produced by Wu Pike in 1991. And Frida Kahlo was played by Salma Hayek in the movie Frida 2002. Perfect. Now we are going to check um, only the verbs, right? Only the verbs. For example, number one, Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. Now we need to write the sentence using these uh, verbs, discover, destroy, invent, paint, write. Right. Right. Okay. But so, the verb in, in, in past in person. Passive, in passive voice, passive voice. Ah, uh, okay. Was wrote. written. Was written, right? Romeo and Juliet was written I, by <laughs> Shakespeare. Perfect. Very good. Number two, San Francisco by an earthquake in 1906. Earthquake destroyed. is terrible, right? destroyed. Was, was right. destroyed. Perfect. Destroyed. Number three, the Sixteen Chapel by Michelangelo. Hi. Paint. Was. No. Uh huh. Paint. Paint. Painted. Very good. Was painted. Was painted by Michelangelo. The Mona Lisa. By Leonardo da Vinci. Was painted. Was painted, was right? Painted. Was painted. Perfect. Was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. The light bulb by Edison. Was invented. Was invented. invented. Very good. Was invented by Edison. And the law of gravity by Newton. Discover. Uh, discovered. Was, discovered. Was discovered, right? Was discovered by Newton. Let's see. So Romeo and Juliet. Let's see here. I cannot see. No. Romeo and Juliet was written by Shakespeare. So written. This is the pronunciation. Right. Written. Wrote. Written. Exactly. San Francisco was destroyed by an earthquake. Right. Number three. Es terremoto. Huh? Yes, exactly. Terremoto. Temblor, exactly. Earthquake. The 16th chapel was painted by Michelangelo. Was painted. Painted. The Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Very good. The libel was invented by Edison. And the law of gravity was discovered by Newton. I have noticed that it's kind of difficult to pronounce the pronunciation of past participles with ed. It is diff is, it is easy to write them. It's fácil escribirlos, right. but it's difficult to pronounce them. Right? It's difficult pronunciarlos. Yeah. So we are going to practice that. So we are going to begin with written. Repeat after me, written. please. Written. Written. Destroyed. 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 Painted. 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 Invented. 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 Discovered. 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 Okay, again. Discovered. 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 In invented. 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 Painted. 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 Destroyed. 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 Was written. Was, was written. written. Okay, perfect. Ya no quiero oír que digan destroyed, painted, <laughs> invented, discovered. No, discovered, no, discovered, right? Painted, no, painted, con I al final, verdad? Painted. So we have to practice a little bit of that, but it's okay because we are learning. Está bien porque estamos aprendiendo. So this is just an advice, a piece of advice. And let me see. Quiero ver si, porque this is, this is a similar exercise that we have done before. 
So let me see if we have, if we have something different here because we are almost finishing. Yes, we are going to have a listening practice because this is uh, like very similar. We are going to do it later, probably tomorrow, just to review. And we are going to have a listening practice. This is also with landmarks, right? Landmarks. And I want you to pay attention to the questions. We are going to read the questions here. Let's see. Send the class to the group. Yes, yes. Voy a enviar la clase al final, ¿verdad? Al final de la semana voy a enviar la clase. Esta clase, esta presentación la enviaré. I will send okay. it, okay? No problem. Um, so I want you to read this, the, the questions, right? Number one is Taj Mahal, right? Somebody of your classmates, uh, one of your classmates already talked about Taj Mahal. So you already have some information about that. Why was it built? Por qué fue construido, right? What do the changing colors of the building represent? ¿Qué representan los colores cuando cambian, verdad? Del edificio, building, edificio, right? Number two, number two, Palace of Versailles. What did King Louis the Fourth want the Hall of Mirrors to show? Hall of Mirrors, right, to show. What problem did the candles cause? ¿Qué problemas causaron las velas, verdad, las candelas? How did the mirrors help? Y la última, the last one, La Sagrada Familia, right? What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? ¿Qué pensaba el arquitecto, verdad? About man-made, man-made significa que fue hecho por el hombre, right? Man-made structures versus nature. Why are no straight lines used? ¿Por qué él no usaba líneas rectas en las estructuras? For example, La Sagrada Familia, right? So we are going to listen and we are going to answer these questions. We are going to pay attention, okay? So just let me play the audio here. Let me know if you are able to listen. Dígame si pueden escuchar. If you are not able to listen, let me know also, right? Can you listen? Yes, teacher. Uh, Unit 11. It's really worth seeing. Page 72. Exercise 2. Perspectives. Where? You were listening to it? Yes? Yep. Okay. Yes, I can listen. Yes, okay. I can listen. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, now I will play the one for Taj Mahal, right? Okay. And try to answer the questions, okay? Page 74, exercise six, listening. Man-made wonders of the world, part A. Listen to three tour guides describe some famous monuments. Take notes to answer the questions below. Then compare with a partner. One, Taj Mahal. Why was it built? What do the changing colors of the building represent? What would you do for love? Would you take 17 years to build a place to remember someone? That's what Emperor Shah Jahan did when he built the Taj Mahal. This incredible building was designed for his wife when she died. She was his third wife, but also his favorite. The colors of the building change with the time of day. And they say that the different colors represent the different moods of women. So, ladies, you can change your mood three times a day and it's accepted. <laughs> now, this was built almost 400 years ago, before modern construction equipment. So think about all the work that went into building this. More than 1,000 elephants were used to transport materials, and around 20,000 people were hired to build the Taj Mahal. Now, if we walk closer, you'll see. Okay, were you able to answer the questions or do you want to listen to it again? Um, 
Again. I would like to hear again. Okay, we are going to listen it once more, okay? Lo voy a poner otra vez, once more. Okay, remember, Taj Mahal, why was it built? And why, what do the changing colors of the building represent, okay? I want you to answer those questions, only two questions. Before, exercise six, listening. Man-made wonders of the world, part A. Listen to three tour guides describe some famous monuments. Take notes to answer the questions below. Then compare with a partner. 1. Taj Mahal. Why was it built? What do the changing colors of the building represent? What would you do for love? Would you take 17 years to build a place to remember someone? That's what Emperor Shah Jahan did when he built the Taj Mahal. This incredible building was designed for his wife when she died. She was his third wife, but also his favorite. The colors of the building change with the time of day, and they say that the different colors represent the different moods of women. So, ladies, you can change your mood three times a day, and it's accepted. <laughs> Now, this was built almost 400 years ago, before modern construction equipment. So think about all the work that went into building this. More than 1,000 elephants were used to transport materials, and around 20,000 people were hired to build the Taj Mahal. Now, if we walk closer, you'll see... Okay, why was it built? For love. For love is yes, exactly, yeah. exactly because uh, the emperor, right, the wife died. She yeah, passed away, remember. right? And then to remember her, he built the Taj Mahal, right? Very good, very romantic, right? Very good, perfect. Now- Romantic, uh, my friend. Yeah, like most of, most of people, right? Like most of people. Number two is, what do the changing colors of the building represent? The three months of the lady? The moods of ladies, right? So you can change the your mood like three times in a day and it's accepted. Very good. So it, it, it means the moods of ladies, right? Or women, right? Very good. Perfect. Now, number two, Palace of Versailles, right? Remember, take notes if it is possible to make nota. What did King Louis XIV want the Health of Mirrors to show? And number two, what problem did the candles cause? How did the mirrors help? Let's listen to it. Two, Palace of Versailles. What did King Louis XIV want the Hall of Mirrors to show? What problem did the candles cause? How did the mirrors help? Now we come to the Hall of Mirrors one of the most famous rooms in the Palace of Versailles. King Louis XIV wanted this room to show all the riches and power of France. The paintings on the wall, the beautiful detail of the room, the gardens outside. They were all made more visible with the mirrors. But electricity didn't exist in those days, so candles were used. Any idea what problems the candles caused? Anyone? Candles make smoke? That's right. Candles make smoke, and smoke can damage paintings. The mirrors reflected the light of the candles, so they didn't have to use as many. Fewer candles meant less smoke, and less smoke damage to the room. Pretty smart, right? Now let's go see some of the 350 rooms and apartments for visitors. Okay, did you answer the two questions or do you want to listen to it again? Okay, sure. Again, okay, sure. one more time. Okay, no problem. We are going to listen to it again. Let's see here. Walk closer, you'll see. Remember, uh, how, why did the King Louis XIV want the Hall of Mirrors to show and what problem did the candles cause, okay? Palace of Versailles. Two, Palace of Versailles. What did King Louis XIV want the Hall of Mirrors to show? What problem did the candles cause? How did the mirrors help? 
Now we come to the Hall of Mirrors, one of the most famous rooms in the Palace of Versailles. King Louis XIV wanted this room to show all the riches and power of France. The paintings on the wall, the beautiful detail of the room, the gardens outside. They were all made more visible with the mirrors. But electricity didn't exist in those days, so candles were used. Any idea what problems the candles caused? Anyone? Candles make smoke? That's right. Candles make smoke, and smoke can damage paintings. The mirrors reflected the light of the candles, so they didn't have to use as many. Fewer candles meant less smoke and less smoke damage to the room. Pretty smart, right? Now let's go see some of the 350 rooms and apartments for visitors. Very good. So what did the King Louis XIV want the Hall of Mirrors to show? Um, or the reflection. So, or reflected? Yes, the reflection of the light, right? They reflect the light of it because they want it to reflect. And also the power, right, of France and everything. And number two, what problem did the candles cause? First, the smoke. Smoke, uh-huh. They couldn't uh, damage the painting. Very good. So the candles cause smoke and smoke can damage paintings. Very good. And the mirrors reflected the light of the candles, so they didn't have to use as many, right? So the the the, the mirrors are used also to illuminate the whole right of mirrors. Very good, perfect. Now the last one, La Sagrada Familia. Two questions also, right? What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? And why are no straight lines used? Straight lines, lineas rectas, right? Straight lines. So let's listen to it. Three. La Sagrada Familia. What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? Why are no straight lines used? Folks, I am so excited today to show you La Sagrada Familia. Construction on this church started in 1882, and over 130 years later, it's still not finished. The architect, Antony Gaudí, felt very strongly that architecture should reflect nature, and you can see this in his buildings. For example, you may notice that hill over there. La Sagrada Familia is exactly one meter shorter because Gaudí believed that no man-made structure should be taller than its natural surroundings. And notice the curves of the church. This is another example of how Gaudí copied nature. He said, if straight lines don't exist in nature, they shouldn't exist in architecture either. Do you want to listen to it again? Yes. Okay, Please the wait. last time. Okay, the last time. Let's listen to it again. No problem. Let's see. Pretty smart, right? For 100 structures versus nature, smoke damage to the apartments for visitors. Three, La Sagrada Familia. What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? Why are no straight lines used? Folks, I am so excited today to show you La Sagrada Familia. Construction on this church started in 1882, and over 130 years later, it's still not finished. The architect, Antony Gaudí, felt very strongly that architecture should reflect nature, and you can see this in his buildings. For example, you may notice that hill over there. La Sagrada Familia is exactly one meter shorter because Gaudí believed that no man-made structure should be taller than its natural surroundings. And notice the curves of the church. This is another example of how Gaudí copied nature. He said, if straight lines don't exist in nature, they shouldn't exist in architecture either. Perfect. So now answer the questions. What did the architects think about 
my main structures versus nature? Architects, architects Anthony. Mm -hmm. Anthony Gaudi. Yes. Exactly, but what did he think about man made structure versus nature? Does he strongly? Sorry? Uh, well, the architect Anthony uh, felt very strongly. Felt very strongly. What do you want to say? What do you mean by felt very strongly? I don't know. I mean, the answer to the question. <laughs> yeah, but the question, the question is, what did the architect, Antonio Gaudí, right, think about my main structures versus nature? Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the question is there. What did he, what did he think about um, man made structure versus nature? He believed that no man made structure should be taller than its natural surroundings. Ahí dice que había una montaña y él hizo la iglesia una, un metro menos que esa montaña porque la naturaleza debía de ser siempre más grande que las cosas hechas por el hombre. So that's what he's saying there. Right? So that's what he think. And why are no straight lines used? No straight lines. ¿Por qué no usaba él líneas rectas? <laughs> you didn't listen to it because uh, uh -huh. it doesn't is natural. Sorry, it doesn't exist in the natural. natural. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. The straight lines they don't exist in nature, right? Everything is like that. Like there is no straight lines. So uh, he copied the nature, right? So he wanted to imitate nature, and that's why all of their buildings are like that. They are not like straight. They are like ovals and things like that, like nature, like trees and things like that. He copied the nature. So it's really interesting when you pay attention to this kind of uh, facts, and um, probably we will be able to, to study a little bit more about it. So uh, that's the listening part. That is the exercise that we have for today. And do you want homework or don't you want homework? Yes, right, <laughs> to practice. Yes. yes, to practice, to practice. So tomorrow we are going to continue with a little bit of talking, conversation. And at the end of the class, I want you to do something. We're going to check something about this. This is your homework, an activity, right about the first time you did the following things using a computer, ride a bike, your first English class, first time driving a car, first time you cook for your family or traveling outside of the country. Choose one, not all of them, not all of them. Choose one, escoja solo una, ¿verdad? No tienen que escribir de todo. So for example, you can choose using a computer. How was your experience when you use the computer for the first time, how old were you? For example, let's see, Eric Cardoza. Do you remember the first time that you used a computer? Yes, I think. How old were you? How old were you? I mean, um, uh, I don't know, four years old? Four years old. Okay, imagine. Yeah. Yes. And and what do you think about the computer? Like it was good, it was boring, it was exciting. I don't know. I I remember that I watch uh, videos on YouTube, and that's okay. it. Okay. My my, my father, my mm -hmm. father found a video on YouTube. Okay, very good. And you were distracted the whole afternoon watching videos and videos and videos. Yeah, all the time all the time perfect that's yeah. good that's good perfect so that is your experience you can write about that you can say my experience i was four years old when i started using computers and it was uh, good because my father taught me and i started watching a lot of youtube videos and i was entertained by by the videos. so that's it right something short but something about you about yourselves right 
riding a bike. How was your experience riding a bike the first time that you ride a bike? Your first English class, for example, did you like it? You don't like it? It was boring. It was exciting. Um, the first time driving a car, right? If you drive a car, how was it, right? So I want you to explain that in English, but using your own words, right? Try to explain it. And then we are going to check the grammar and everything, the pronunciation and everything. So do you have any question? Mm. Preguntas? Um, Questions? No question, teacher, all clear. Everything's clear, okay, perfect. So I will see you tomorrow and hopefully I won't have any interruption for electricity and have a nice night, okay? Thank you for coming and your, your hard work. Bye-bye, teacher. Have a good night. Thank have you. Night. Have a good night. Have a good night, teacher. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.